dishes or with the drinks. What do we need to do to stop the straw? Somebody tell me. Tell the restaurants to what? Stop serving straws. I saw this at the tip of, of Florida, where the two oceans meet, the Gulf of Mexico and um, the Atlantic. They had a kiosk that said, we do not use straws because turtles eat them. It was kids who pushed the kiosks to put out the sun. We should not be cleaning up the beach year after year. We should be having the students figure out how to keep our beaches clean and come up with systems and ideas so every year the trash on the beach is what? Less. Otherwise, we're just going to be assigning the role of beach cleanup consistently. This is what I want kids to do because in order to think that way, we get to do service learning. Um, I'm going to skip that one. Projects. Already you mentioned service learning projects. I'm so glad you did. That is a common term right now, service learning projects. And I'd like to do something with it. How many of you want one more project to do? Anybody in the room want one more project? I got one here. We're going to give him all the projects. I love project-based learning because I think it's great to do projects. However, service learning, we call it in our classrooms, in our academic settings. If we say, I'm doing a service learning project, we're only talking about the service and not the learning. We're talking about what the kids did in service, but we're not honoring the learning. I propose that to create a, a uniform language in a school helps elevate what we're doing. If we do an after-school service learning project, that makes sense. If we do a CAS service learning project for the group project, that makes sense. But in our academics, we really want to hold the academic pedagogy of service learning. So I'm going to propose we don't call it a service learning project. What can we call it? I want you all to think, what would we call it if we were doing an academic, I, I don't want to give the word away, if we're doing service learning in our academics. It's not just the project, it's the learning. So we could call it a service learning what? Who's got a word for it? Experience. Experience. It's a service learning experience I create for a classroom. An experience that brings alive the learning as we lead to service. What other word would we call it? A service learning? Opportunity. Opportunity. A service learning? Initiative. Initiative. A service learning approach. A service learning process or process, depending where I am in the world. A service learning method. A service learning adventure. All of these words align more with what's authentic. A service learning pedagogy. But if we just talk about the project, we may be forgetting that it's a process. And what we're doing in our classroom is elevating how we teach and how kids learn. So I love projects, and I, but I'd like us to think, and you can use the word project today, I won't mind. But in the long run, I'd like you to consider as a school how we call it so we distinguish between the things kids do with academic learning and what they do after school. It's very inquiry-based. Service learning was inquiry-based before inquiry-based was a term. Service learning has always been based on asking questions and not stopping with the first step, looking at the question under the question and the question underneath that. Service learning is built on the question asking process long before that was part of the pedagogy that we try to infuse. The difference, what I found in the last couple of years going around to international schools, is people have frequently have this kind of epiphany where they say, you know, this is actually more inquiry based. Because I find in my typical classroom, I'm the one that's giving the students the questions. With service learning, they're raising the questions. And that's the distinction I like us to be looking for and on the lookout for as we're looking and learning the process. What do you think makes service learning very differentiated in this, this approach to teaching and learning? Why is it automatically differentiated? Anybody have any idea? Yes. They're looking for the answers to their own questions. They're giving themselves different roles and responsibility. Every student becomes a person of value with their interests, skills, and talents recognized. What one person can do, another person can't do, but they share it together. My sister, for example, runs a program for kids with autism in St. Louis. So this is a good way to look at it. She has kids across the entire autism spectrum. She learned, and the school learned, that about 45 minutes of the school is a wildlife animal uh, refuge that really was struggling and needed help. Do kids care about animals? Yes. And they brought the person in to discover and interview them to find out what the needs were. They had several needs. They needed sheets and blankets.
blankets and towels, old sheets of blankets and towels that they could use for the animals. So the kids decided to collect those. But not only that, they had a washer dryer at their school and all the kids learned how to use it. How many of your kids know how to learn, use a washer dryer? Would that be good learning for them? Especially the guys. Come on, teach them how to use a washer dryer in animals. I bet she said that. So, um, so they learned that, but they also learned how to fold things. Now for the kids on the autism spectrum, learning how to use a washer and dryer and fold things was really part of their learning practical life skills. So they all learned these skills. But then they wanted to raise money to also help the shelter. And when we talk about raising money, I would like us to get away from having kids go home and ask their parents for money. Because when they do that, they're really taxi cabs. That who's doing most of the work in fundraising efforts? The teachers and the parents and the kids are just taxing cabs moving money back and forth. We need to break that cycle. So in this case, the kids wanted to raise money to help animals. So they said, how can we help animals in raising money in the first place? They decided to open a dog biscuit company. If they sold cookies, people could be suspect of how the kids washed their hands. But for dogs, they're really not curious. They don't care. So this worked out really well. Now, if you think of kids on the autism spectrum, every kid could fit in with the dog biscuit company, am I right? Some kids could package, some kids could cook, some kids could design. Every student had a part in it. And these dog biscuits sold like hotcakes. In fact, when the students wanted to stop making them, the community said, oh no, you have to, we want them. And they still, five years later, have a dog biscuit company in their school today. <laughs> Point well taken. Differentiated learning. I'm going to have a great day. All right. Service learning, we're going to see, extends us and really is a high-level teaching process that weaves together the best part of projects with inquiry-based learning, differentiated learning, and getting kids to understand their curriculum more effectively. And this is the model. Could everybody, oh, if you want, you have your handouts. About page four in your handouts, you have this design. About page four in this non-articulated numbering system I have. You have a page in two ways. Turn it over at the other side. There you go. Okay. You have it two ways. So open the pages up like this. Everybody should teach people open it up like that. You'll see two pages. Open it up. You'll have two pages. There you go. Can I borrow your sister for a second? If you open it up, you see two visions of it. You've got two. This one is the page that you see here, and this one is one we're going to fill out with what are the skills students gain in each, each step of the way. All right, there are five stages, and this is what you're going to walk out memorizing, knowing, humming, loving. This is your mantra for service learning. There are five stages, and as we go forward, you're going to know these five stages. You're also going to say, hey, I do a lot of this already. This is good teaching. It's not different from what you typically do in a classroom. When you introduce a topic, what do the students have to do? They investigate, am I correct? They investigate the topic. What you're going to learn is a particular method of investigation that you can use to really help your students investigate in engaging and really strong ways that break them out into standing in front of a computer, sitting in front of a computer as the only way to research. We're going to heighten the level of investigation. And as students investigate, they ask questions and it always raises more questions. And they take that set of questions to preparation. And that's where you do the bulk of your curriculum, in your standards and benchmark. You see right in the middle of the drawing is the word curriculum, because that's at the core, like a little nucleus affecting everything. You want to advance your curriculum. Service learning works best when you see it as part of the engine that moves your curriculum forward. Preparation, that's where you read the novels, study the formulas, do the math equations, do all that you need to do about history, science, all the different subjects, in ideally an integrated fashion. And even if you just teach one subject, you're drawing from the other subjects they learn to move them forward. Students typically want to go right from investigation to action, but we say, no, we must prepare first. We must prepare. And then they get to action. When they're well prepared, they have a plan for action. And they thought of much of it. Maybe not all of it, but much of it, because we give credence to youth voice and choice. And then they take action in four different ways. They get to choose one or both or many of four ways. Direct service. Can anybody give me an example of what they think direct service would look like? Actually, here's what we're going to do. These tables.